troisième fois. En débat, sénateur Klein. Honorable Senators, on the unceded territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin people, I'm honored to rise at the third reading as sponsor of Bill C-45. As you recall from our recent debate on second reading, this legislation amends the First Nations Fiscal Management Act, helping support economic reconciliation and greater prosperity for First Nations. Having made extended remarks at second reading in the timeless words of former Senator Baker, I will be brief. <laughs> to refresh the chamber, Bill C-45 contains important measures to enhance the statute's fiscal frameworks for the 348 currently scheduled and participating First Nations and First Nations who may choose to opt in and benefit from their leg legislation in the future. These improvements will support greater economic self-determination -determ in relation to tax authorities, financial information, borrowing and infrastructure developments and maintenance. Most important, this bill will create the First Nations Infrastructure Institute, a center of excellence to support First Nations in achieving their aspirations for high quality, sustainable infrastructure. These changes go hand in hand with rights recognition achieved via UNDRIP in 2021, holding up economic, social and cultural rights. Thank you to our critics, Senator Martin, this chamber and the Indigenous Peoples Committee for moving quickly on this important bill returned to us without amendment. This is a testament to the many years of creative thinking, hard work and advanced consultation that went into Bill C-45. Proponents of this le legislation, including Senator Gold, have handed me a sponsor's dream. In engaging on Bill C-45's details, however, I understand the key champions behind this le legislation have only made these changes look easy, though their vision, determination and attention, through their de vision, determination and attention to detail. Congratulations again to Ernie Daniels, President and CEO of the First Nations Finance Authority, Harold Calla, Executive Chair of the First Nations Financial Management Board, Manny Jules, Chief Commissioner of the First Nations Tax Commission, and Alan Claxon and Jason Calla of the First Nations Infrastructure Institute Development Board and their teams. As I said before, along with participating First Nations, this is their bill. In addition, I would underscore the enthusiasm and dedication of their team. I was delighted to speak with several of their organizations, bright-eyed and valued members, members in our cafeteria, following clause-by-clause -clause proceedings. They are obviously pr proud to be in the Senate doing their part for economic reconciliation. That conversation put a smile on my face and wind in my sails that indeed this dream is becoming reality. Thank you and congratulations as well to Minister Miller and his team, including all officials involved, for their leadership and efforts to advance Bill C-45 resulting in unanimous support in the other place. These proposed changes to the First Nations Fiscal Management Act broaden and modernize the mandates of the three First Nations-led financial institutions under established under the Act. This will allow them to provide services that better respond to growing needs to communities while also creating a fourth institution in relation to infrastructure. The proposed amendments would assist the First Nation Tax Commission in supporting communities to create local revenues laws beyond reality, beyond real property taxation. That would strengthen the education and capacity supports available to communities as they build their economies. These proposed amendments would also expand the services and certification standards of First Nations Financial Board to new client segments including tribal councils and treaty and self-governing groups and ensure strong and diversified Indigenous represent representation on its board. There are currently three First Nations in Saskatchewan that have achieved financial management systems, and I'm quite proud of them. In total, 174.2 million in loans have been accessed by First Nations in Saskatchewan. This is an important achievement for First Nations. In terms of the benefits of participation in First Nation Fiscal Management Act, for communities today, I'd like to share the story of Mittawaska's Nihiawak Nation. I'd like to quote Chief Darrell Watson who said, development and implementation of policies and procedures for day-to-day -day financial activities will lead to long-term sustainability for Mitsubasa's Nihawak. It is paramount to develop structure with short-term and long-term strategic plans, work plans for good administrative governance, for membership, for future generations, and our business people. The community was first added to the FMA schedule in 2013. Four years later, with the help of the First Nations Tax Commission, it passed property taxation and assessment laws. In 2019, it set tax rates and passed an expenditure law for this first time, collecting more than $80,000 to help support First Nation infrastructure and local services from non-community member farmers who lease agricultural land. 
Metawastasis takes a modified approach to taxing agricultural land. They determine the average taxes per acre in adjacent municipality and they charge taxpayers based on the acts of that. And so on and so forth. You. We'll pick that up. We will have to pick that up. Honorable Senators, having been unable to beat the clock yesterday, <laughs> I rise to deliver part, deliver part two of my speech as a sponsor of Bill C-45, Amendments to the First Nations Fiscal, Fiscal Management Act. In the genre of sequels, I'm aiming to for the Top Gun Maverick of Senate third reading speeches. <laughs> I left off speaking about a success story from Saskatchewan regarding the fiscal frameworks for First Nations that this bill enhances. <laughs> In terms of the benefits of participation in the First Nation Fiscal Management Act for communities, I'd like to share the story of Mississauga's Nihiawak. I quote Chief Darrell Watson, who said, "Development and implementation of, of policies and procedures for day-to-day -day financial services and activities will lead to long-term sustainability for Mississauga Nihiawak." It's important to develop a structure with short-term and long-term strategic plans, work plans for good administrative governance for our membership, for future generations, and for our business partners." End quote. Mitsawasis near Hiawak is a Cree community located 70 kilometers west of Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Mitsawasa near Hiawak, First Nation, is notable because it was the first in Saskatchewan to receive an FMS certificate through the First Nations Financial Management Board. This helped the community make its mark in the business world, creating several prosperous companies that are engaged in a, ver a variety of businesses, ranging from a gas station and cafe to property management, engineering, and an industrial contractor. The community was first added to the FMA schedule in 2013. Four years later, later with the help of First Nations Tax Commission, it passed property taxation and assessment laws. And in 2019, it set tax rates and passed an expenditure law for the first time, collecting more than $80,000 to help support First Nation infrastructure and local services from non-community member farmers who lease their agricultural land. Mitsawasis takes a modified approach to taxing agricultural land. They determine the average taxes per acre in the adjacent municipality, and they charge, charge taxpayers based on the acres lease. Mitsawasa is the first First Nation to successfully Im implement this approach. The capacity building elements provided under First Nations Fiscal Management Act have helped the community unlock its economic success. To that point, the community's tax administrator received training at the Tulo Center of Indigenous Economics, an accredited institution which offers training in local revenue systems and financial management programs. This was instrumental in making Mitsawasa's tax system fully operational. To sum that up, FMS certification process has helped Mitsawasa and Nihiawak develop and implement found sound finance and administrative government practices, build fiscal capacity, and strengthen self-determination. I feel privileged to share that success story with you. A journey of year, 10 years, that demonstrates what is, po what is possible when First Nation governments have practical tools for modern myth fiscal management. And it demonstrates what is possible when we move toward new practices and new ways of doing things, working in full partnership with indig Indigenous leaders and experts. To conclude, I would again thank the critic, Senator Martin, the Indigenous Peoples Committee, and this chamber for moving swiftly on C-45, I would also offer a final congratulations to the champions of economic reconciliation who have created and driven this legislation. My experience as sponsor of Bill C-45 adds to my optimism that Canada and the Indigenous peoples are advancing shared prosperity. We have great distance yet to travel, but we have found the path with the sun in our face and the wind at our back. Thank you, colleagues, for your support, and I look forward to royal assent of this important legislation. Thank you, merci, and hi, kitatamanhin.